Apex has gone through a lot of changes, like a lot. Here are 30 free things that were removed from Apex that you probably forgot about. The Mozambique used to have a custom animation where the character would angrily toss the Mozambique away if you switched it for another weapon. This was because at a time, the Mozambique was so bad it was considered a meme by the community and the devs alike. B-Hop healing used to be a feature used by Sweats in the very early days of Apex. This overpowered technique required you to run, slide, jump, followed by starting your heal and then spamming the jump input while slightly strafing to the left and the right to fully keep your sprinting movement momentum as you're healing up. The muzzle flash in Apex used to be horrible. It was awful. Both your own muzzle flash and the enemy's muzzle flash would cover the entire screen when fighting each other, turning every fight into a mess where nobody could see anything. This was meant to act as a means of balance, and you could actually lower the muzzle flash on your automatic weapon by equipping a golden stabilizer. When the muzzle flash finally was tuned into something more real, reasonable, they forgot to tune the golden stabilizer, meaning that the golden stabilizer would have a higher rate of blinding muscle flash if compared to the new standard muscle flash values. This took them about a month to fix. These free bins under the waterfall on Olympus used to have a high tier loot, almost guaranteeing a golden item or weapon every time you drop there. In the same vein, you could find a guaranteed purple armor on these bins outside of northwest of Skyhook. Big thanks to Lagofast for sponsoring this video. Are you on an unstable connection or are your speed's good, yet you somehow just can't keep a consistent performance in game, then LegoFast might be the solution for you. LegoFast's main service is based on a LFP data transfer protocol to match you in the most optimal nodes, meaning it will stabilize your ping and reduce your network fluctuation during game lag. In English, it makes sure that your connection between your network and the game server is as smooth as it can be. Not only does LegoFast boost your network's performance, but it boosts your frames per second as well. LegoFast gives you custom options to modify the game and optimize as you see fit, and all of these settings will automatically apply when you launch the game. Not only does LegoFast increase your FPS, but it lowers your ping as well by connecting you to the best servers through the best routes. And if you don't feel like your connection needs stabilizing, wait until you hear this. LegoFast also accelerates the downloads from the game stores such as Steam, Origin, or Epic Games so you can get the newest patches before anyone else. LegoFast currently has a free trial and you can give it a try by clicking the link in the description. Let's play Apex with LegoFast. The Anvil Receiver hop-up was a legendary hop-up that increased semi-auto damage but made you use two ammo per shot at a reduced fire rate. The single damage multiplier was 2 to 5 times for the 301 and 2.25 times for the flatline. Another hop-up that has since been removed was the select fire receiver. This hop-up allowed the prowler to switch from burst to full auto and allowed the havoc to charge up and fire a hit scan laser, meaning there was no travel time, it would instantly hit anyone no matter the range. At the time the havoc could either be equipped with the turbo or the select fire and the select fire was overall considered useless. This was before we got the charge rifle. <laughs> and of course we have the quick draw holster, which was another hop-up available for a short period of time, in this case only for the duration of season 7. This reduced the weapon swap time, how long it takes to aim down sights, and the hipfire spread, and it could be equipped on the RE45 and the wingman. The graffiti mod was even more temporary, which was a hop-up that was only available for a very short period of time in the always be closing evolved game mode, which teased season 6 and Rampart. The graffiti mod could only be equipped on the Spitfire and would increase magazine size by 15%, decrease reload time by 25%, and made you fire paint loaded rounds. And you could actually select the color of the paint yourself, toggling between colors by hitting the select fire button, which some players used to paint different legends inside of the game. Early in the game, you could abuse the jump tower and fly, well, infinitely, by looking up right when you're about to hit the ground, which put you in a hover animation, which then could be repeated when you hit the ground at infinitum. Loot bins and some other map objects could be punched to store momentum, and then climbed on top of and walked off of to launch one across the map. In the same vein, there was a non-zero chance that opening a loot bin would flat out kill you. You had the same risk when opening certain doors, especially if you were a wraith coming out of face. If you climbed this door and mark it on King's Canyon while it was opening, you would get crushed between the door and the bone or pipe right above it. For a short period of time, to the rejoicing of Reddit and annoyance of TTV wraiths, there was a lever penalty in the normal public matches. If you left over three games in a row, you'd get a five minute lever penalty. If you think that the lever penalty for public matches should have stayed in the game, hit the like button. If you think it shouldn't be in the game, I guess
just hit the dislike button. Anyways, there was a time where the Fermite didn't deal damage to doors and instead would clip through the door, dealing damage to the enemy on the other side if angled correctly. Correctly being 90 degrees to the side. PC players used to be able to modify certain files to gain an advantage. They could and very commonly reduced or fully removed muscle flash as its visibility was a problem. They could also disable lighting for performance and in some cases they changed one specific line of code that made Bangalore smokes see-through. You used to be able to spam the zipline without a penalty. Respawn tried balancing this in several ways, first by adding half of a second of a penalty before you use the zipline again after dismounting and eventually settling on the version we have today where you can't use the zipline more than a few times before it doesn't allow you to get on the zipline anymore. The Apex Elite queue was a separate, more sweaty queue before Ranked came out. Some could argue that this was the precursor to the rank that we have today. To get into Elite queue, players had to finish in the top 5 of their public match. After that, they'd have to continue playing in the top 5 to stay in this Elite queue. Elite queue games wasn't just a fancy names for cool players, the ring closed faster and the ring damage was increased as well. Apex players who stayed in the Elite queue through several games in a row gained a badge which actually shows how much of a top 5 streak you actually managed to get inside of these Elite queue lobbies. Another badge from the Elite queue which isn't attainable anymore is the 888 badge, which could be considered probably one of the rarest badges in the game. In order to get the 888 badge, you'd have to win at least 8 Apex Elite queue matches with 8 different legends with at least 8 kills in each of those games. This was especially hard because it was at a time where there only were 10 legends, and getting 8 kills on the less powerful legends such as Caustic or at the time Gibraltar in a lobby of only Elite queue players wasn't easy to say at the least. Bloodhound's tactical used to not show an enemy in real time when they got scanned. Instead, it will light up tracks and show a static ghost of where the enemy had been. Lifeline heal ups used to dominate competitive play way before ranked came out. Lifeline's passive used to be a fast heal at a 25% heal increase instead of the golden backpack's 50% increase. And a Darkthrone could be deployed in the zone, which takes way less damage than it does today, even in the final rings, which made it a viable strat to give Lifeline all of your team's heals, your golden backpack, and then let the Lifeline try to outheal the enemy team and the ring as the damage kept ticking without getting to kill her. The Disruptor round does live on, most recently being integrated into the former care package alternator, but it's far from where it used to be. A version of the Disruptor rounds dealt 70% more damage per bullet against armored targets and could be equipped on the RE45 or the alternator. But not only that, when Disruptors first came out, they did 226% damage per shot against armored targets, allowing an alternator to break somebody's armor, even if purple, in free bullets. Thankfully, this was hotfixed after three days, but a lot of people forget just how bad it used to be for a little while. SMGs used to be able to be equipped with marksman scope, such as the three times or the two to four times variable scope. Similarly, marksman rifles such as a triple take or G7 scout could be equipped with sniper scopes. There's not a lot of things in Apex as cursed as the G7 scout with a four to ten digital threat scope. Go on, try me. Watson used to be able to have three defensive pylons active at a time. Punch boosting was a movement technique, if you want to call it that, where users could punch the ground to get a little bit of extra momentum from the knockback. This could be abused on large downward slopes to gain incredible amounts of velocity, and it actually made Stormpoint a little bit more fun to play. You could also punch the ground when falling from a larger height, and if you timed your punch right, with your punch connecting to the ground before your feet did, the knockback would cause enough momentum to stop you from taking any fall stun. Wraith used to have this rare animation after placing a portal coming out of her face. This was only available for a very short period of time after being discovered, as this was when the Oki hand was the biggest meme ever and it was followed by the infamous hacker 4chan, making up a fake rumor that the Oki hand was actually a white supremacist dog whistle sign. As a precaution, Respawn seemed to quietly remove the animation from the game around the same time. The Mirage for Yash is not just part of an arena's map, but it was a returning point of interest on both Kings Canyon and World's Edge, one being available between Thermal Station and Lava Fisher, and the other one hovering above where Skulltown used to be on Kings Canyon, when there still was a hole on Kings Canyon. The early versions of World's Edge featured a fully working, or well, mostly working train. This train would travel across the middle to the northern parts of World's Edge at a pretty high speed and feature very high tier loot. You can still see the remnants of this train scattered around the tracks that still are on the map. The early version of the Mastiff, back when the care package weapons were golden, could entirely one-shot an enemy if you got close enough and did a headshot. It used to do 18 damage per pellet at a 2 times headshot multiplier. It fires 8 pellets, which meant that a headshot could do upwards of 288 
damage. This would be more than enough, even with the red armor that we have today. Rampart's skin, gold standard, used to have red discolored teeth. Nightmare inducing. Make sure that you hit the subscribe button or Rampart will haunt your dreams tonight. You used to be able to stick arc stars on your own teammates. This obviously didn't damage your teammates, but it would damage anyone that's close enough, leading to fun interactions such as this. Similarly, you could stick your arc stars on Crypto's drone when he was released for the same effect. The heat shield used to be available in both tournaments and ranked, leading to some teams staying outside of zone for as long as possible to get placement points without dying. There didn't used to be any midair inaccuracy on your weapons if fired after sliding off a ledge by using Pathfinder's grapple or taking Octane's jump pad when crouched. Bloodhound's tactical Eye of the All Father used to count as an assist for pubs and ranked if the enemy had been scanned within a few seconds of them dying. Oob, or out of bounds place, was a strategy that was popularized by professionals and then fixed shortly after. Pro teams would use Valkyrie to fly on top of large cliffs, standing out of bounds and then shooting down on unsuspecting teams, grenading them, and then dropping down after the timer would force him to, leading to some heavily one-sided team fights. When custom reticles were added initially, users found that while you could use the in-game editor to get a simple color change, you could edit the game files and get some extreme colors and shapes to make some really useful or your straight up funny looking crosshairs. King's Canyon used to have loot bunkers that you could enter by opening these lids, where you would find high tier loot and a guaranteed golden weapon in each one of them. There was one by Cage, one by Swamps, and one by the Forest, but there also was a loot bunker all the way down between water treatment and where Skulltown used to be. But it had been broken and could actually only be accessed by flying in from the dropship, taking a jump tower, or climbing down these nefarious steps. Inside, there was a charge tower and some high tier loot, and the blast door could actually still be open from the inside. You might actually be interested in hearing about the 44 most ridiculous myths in Apex Legends. If so, check out the video on the screen. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you all tomorrow.